Hey guys, and welcome back to Regretsit. Brexit England, Northern Ireland and Eastern Europe. And in Brexit England, it seems that Corella de Braveman has done a massive deal with the French by offering them another eight million pounds. A whole eight million pounds. So I think that takes it up to um, around 63 million now because we was paying them 55 million before and now we're gonna pay them um, another eight million on top. But I think that, that gives us some operatives in, um, I don't think it gives us operatives on the beach, but the French have said, oh yeah, we're, we're gonna put more, um, we're gonna put more people out on the beaches, right? But I I don't see what's in it, this, what's in this for the French, do you know what I mean? Because that, you know, I don't see how, why the French would be, I mean, you know, obviously another eight million for them would just be like, okay, fair enough, you know, if we wanna, you know, but I mean, eight million in, in the great scheme of things, right, you know, it's, you know, yeah, it's a lot of money, but it's not. It's, it's a lot of money, but when it comes down to a country, it's not a lot of money for a country, right? So, I don't understand what the French will get out of right? a lot less of those people coming here. I mean, unless it has an effect where, if then if they know it's, if they know that they cannot leave from France, then I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I was going. I was going to say, well, maybe that might stop people from going to France to get to 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 get to here but I just can't really see I just can't really see that I just can't see that either I just you know I just think that it's, it's I just can't no I, I, yeah I just can't really see that either right so, but I would like to know what in it for the French so that the French keep all the people that say well they want to come over to this country but the French Say well, no, we're, no, we're we're going to go out of our way to keep them in France when they when we know that they want to go to Britain. So I just don't I don't see what's in it for um, for the French, you know, unless there's some secret deals going on and the Brits are saying, listen, you know what, we're going to set up a little centre so so we can like start processing people properly, unless it's something like that. But you see, I mean, at the moment you know, they're bang on. Oh well, it's all the bloody Albanians coming already. It's the bloody Albanians. But you see what they're doing. Right, is they're looking for the whitest for the for the for the lightest people, right? Because you know most Albanians are are quite pale skin, right? Yeah, they, yeah, most of them are, most of them are pretty white Albanians. So, but you can still, but you can still, because they 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 have got a bit of a, a Mediterranean a, a bit more of a Mediterranean look to them right but they are but they are white they're not like Romanians because Romanians are very um Romanians are very dark skinned you know but there are some obviously there are some Romanians who are who are who are pretty white but when it comes down to it now right you can just see you can see their you can see just going around in their little brains right look you know we can make this into a, we can make this into a major problem by you know by calling that you know and now, if we say, oh, well, you know, it's all the bloody Albanians, isn't it? It's all the Albanians. So you pick out the white ones because you can't say to the, you can't say about the brown ones, oh, well, look at them. They've come from bloody Afghanistan. Send them back now. No. Nah. <laughs> that can't go down well, can it? Right. In the same way, right, that, you know, white Europeans, right, if you believe Brexit was about you, <laughs> right, then you really have another thing coming. Right. These people, right, are so you know people who you know people who lose their own freedom of movement to make a point right that's who that's who's here right so if you think that they wouldn't target right other white people to say oh yeah well you know it's you know look at us you know we don't want them here when it's really the blacks and the Asians they don't want it <laughs> right you know but you know it's very difficult for them to just come up and just say it out to us, you know, it's not it's not the fucking nineteen seventies, you know, it's not the fucking National Front, and we don't all live in motherfucking Eltham, right? So it's much more difficult for them to come out, right, and say, yeah, well, you know, we won't we won't rid of the blacks and the bloody Asians. It's a lot more difficult to do that, right? So they just look around and they find, you know. A, a, a set of white people they can pick on. I mean, they've always had the Jews. They could, they've always had the Jews that they could do this to, right? But they, you know, when it comes down to it. Right, because now if you notice, all the focus is on you know from the people coming across on the crossings. It's, it's all bloody Albanians, isn't it? It's all the Albanians. They're all criminals. They're coming over with criminal gangs, isn't it? That's all the Albanians. That's who's coming over. All the Albanians. But all of that, right, is simply 
right? Because, you know, the black and the brown people, right? They know they've come from countries, right? That this country and America and the rest of the Europeans have had a hand in fucking up. They know that, right? So it's a lot more difficult, right? Well, they say it's a lot more difficult. You know, they can sell that. They, they, you know, they can sell that message. But when you sell that message, it's just out and out racist. Yeah? But if you start mentioning Albanians, because they say, oh, no, they're white. In the same way, they'll turn around to you and say to you, well, no, um, you know, the, remember that all the people from the EU are white Europeans. And I'm just like, well, you know something there. Yeah? I don't mind, right, even though, you know, obviously, I, you know, I love my European brothers and sisters. Of course I do. But if you want to exchange white people, right, for black and brown people, because that's what Brexit, that's what Brexit brought you, right, because that's what would have to happen, right? You'd have to exchange, you know, the, the, the white Europeans, right, for black and brown people. Now, I don't mind, I, you know, I'm, listen, you know, if that, if I knew that that's what Brexit was going to be about, I would have probably voted for Brexit myself, right, if I knew that Brexit was, you know, if I knew Brexit was going to be about, you know, getting a load of people, you know, you know people over from France, so they could try and come over and get themselves a better life, I'd have voted for that shit myself. And welcome back to By Any Means Necessary. Thank you so much for all your messages sent me. And a special thanks to everybody who signed up to my channel. I feel so blessed with so much people that have signed up. So thank you so much for that. I'll go for all your messages. I'll answer as many as I can. But I will like all your messages for definite. So we're going to start. With, you know, we are starting in Bali. But only because the G20 is being held there. Right? Now, wasn't all this lot just a cop? Right? These, these people, wasn't it all just a cop? Like last week or the week before, I went and whoever it was. Right? talking about climate change and they're all flying out to Bali to all the G20 the G20 leaders right? obviously apart from Putin who sent Sergei Redrov in his place and it looks like that Ser Sergei Lebrov it looks like yeah he's um it looks like he's become ill and he's, apparently he's in hospital in Bali so, so from what I heard from from the first reports from what I've heard and then after that yeah the, the next reports I've heard um the Russians have been saying no it's, this is not true but it wouldn't surprise me yeah, if Putin sent him over right to to go to um to Bali right and then poisoned his ass right while he was on his way there right, or when he or when he got to so that he could just blame the west because that's what these because that's that's what these people do right when you've got tyrants right you know these people will often like fling on some some false flags right every single all right of the original people who started problems at the black lives matter um protests all of them was false flags all of them and then that makes the police attack people and then people instantly start chucking stones and bottles at the police because the police are attacking them so that's what happens right you know you had people from the you had people from the boogaloo boys going to black lives matter um and and causing problems so it it wouldn't surprise me yeah if if um it wouldn't surprise me at all right if putin right had poisoned Sergei Redrov himself. Wouldn't surprise me at all. Remember Sergei Redrov, he's the one who called Liz Truss a dummy. Imagine what he thinks of all of us. He must think that we're a bunch of bloody dummies because we voted for, well, say we, not we. It's not even, you know, it's not even, it's, it's, it's just a, a couple of hundred thousand, well, not, not, I think about 150,000 Tory members, right, who, who voted in the last, you know, voted for, you know, for Liz Truss to get in anyway. Right, but um, yeah, as I was saying about you know the, all these people flying out to to um to Bali, you know these people just get on my nerves because all they want to do every single time, all they want to do right is just go and it seems that it just seems that every prime minister, right, apart from Liz Truss, because she never got a chance to do anything, right? she doesn't get a chance to do anything, right? No G twenty, no COP, right. And there must be some more. There must be some more meetings throughout the year when these when these idiots does meet. And they, they must have they must have somewhere they meet every year. Somewhere they meet every two years. Somewhere they meet every three, every four, every five, right? But that's how that's how these this crap works, right? But for me, these people, right? You know, traveling all over the world like this when you know what they could just simply do this over Zoom. Because you know, Rishi Sunak, I'm sure he flies in something that's, that's equivalent to the size of a jumbo jet. And what's the what's the how much how much people's going to be on it? A hundred, you know. So it doesn't really make it doesn't really make it, it makes no sense really. It makes no sense at all. 
you know, for, that, for these people to be flying out to, you know, whether it's COP or it's, or it's you know, the G20. I don't know why Britain's going anyway, because Britain's only going to make itself look stupid. Jubilant Ukrainians have been greeting Ukraine soldiers in the streets in Carson because they've uh, they've taken it back, right? But you know, it's very worrying, right? Because they've got a dam there, right? And you know, just don't know if the Russians yeah would would be prepared to um, to blow up the dam. So the dam just floods out the you know floods out the whole town, the whole city. We don't know because you know that's what. Um, we never know what we've never know with the Russians, especially as we've seen what they've been doing, and we know they've been targeting civilian areas. So if it comes down to killing like, how much ever people live in that region, if there's if if there is someone who would do it, it would be it would be the Russians at the moment. Sean Penn, <laughs> Sean Penn, right, has given Vladimir Zelensky one of his Oscars, and he says. When they, he said, when they've won the war, he wants it back. <laughs> but I was like, well, <laughs> couldn't you come over with a box of AR-15s? Like, you know, you can get them in your country. Right? Couldn't you come over with some of those or something? <laughs> right? He says, let's go to the Oscar. <laughs> but yeah, he says he wants it back. Well, it's really strange, isn't it? Taking the Oscar, taking the Oscar and saying, yeah, you have this until you've won the war and then I want it back. Joe, Joe Biden had a senior moment the other day, yeah, where he um, mixed up Cambodia and Colombia. Maybe he might have been, you know, on, you know, sampling some of the Colombian goods, and that's why he's mixed them up. Or maybe it might be because he's bloody old and sometimes he mixes stuff up. <sighs> Donald Trump has said, if Republicans do well, brilliantly fantastic the red wave predicted if they do the red wave donald trump has said that would be his all down to him he would accept he would he would accept all the praise for that and then he went on to say that if it's a really bad night for republicans nobody should blame him it's nothing to do with him I don't even know how he gets away with this shit. I really don't know how he... How the hell you can stand up there and say, well, if they win, it was all about me. It was because of me why they've all won. If they don't, no, don't blame me. It's nothing to do with me. Just don't understand how he gets away with that shit. But he does. He does. I mean, they are going absolutely crazy in America over over the um, the latest election results. Because obviously, you know, there was supposed to be this massive red wave, yeah? And, I've, you know... It's not even like, it's not even a trickle. It's not even like, you know, just a couple of spots. It's just like, it's, you know, but, well, in fact, I believe that the, the, the Democrats have held onto the Senate, which is just unbelievable because, you know, on a normal basis, you know, most, um, most um, presidents become a lame duck at some stage. Most, literally most of them do because you know one of, one of them normally take the, you know the other side normally take the house and the senate in the midterms i don't know why but that's that's just how it seems to work out in america but uh, <coughs> but most of them right you know it's just you know this these these um results for the democrats are the best for i don't know how much years but it's been a long time that these results are the best from since then right and if you hear these evangelicals i mean these guys are off their meds i mean these guys have to take lotions potions and pills right for them to be sane because these guys, I'm telling you, these guys should never, ever be let anywhere near a microphone or a video. Anywhere near. They shouldn't be standing up in front of people preaching. Right? Because all of them, you know, all of them was predicting, oh, there's going to be this massive red wave. And, you know, the thing is, right, they're saying, you know, that they, the, the, you know, the things, what they call the other side, you know, the darkness, they're the devil, and if it's stuff, all, you know, this is the reason why, yeah, that the church and politics... Right, should be separated at all times. Church and politics should never have anything to do with each other. 
never because one, when they do then you've got people who are trying to pre you know trying to preach at people from a book that has been written written by by human beings at some stage i don't even think i well i know for a fact that these evangelicals there yeah, have not read the bible they've never read the bible because if they did if they did then they, 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 the bible was probably upside down when they read it right or they read it and someone had replaced it with a comic because these people seriously they're, they're unhinged they really are unhinged and we've got mushrooms or shrooms that are to be made legal in colorado in 2024 so I believe we should all get over to Colorado <laughs> immediately. <laughs> now, you know, it's just amazing, isn't it? A lot of a lot of um a lot of countries are very progressive, you know, or you want cities, well states, especially in America, states, isn't it? Right, but you know, obviously you've got places like um Holland where and and Portugal. I think Portugal's a lot even less restrictions in Portugal. I think I, I think that most drugs are um are decriminalized in Portugal I th I think anyway but you know a lot of, a lot of countries are so much more progressive you know you know I mean we you know we're still you know in this country they're still you know kicking down people's doors for weed you know and in you know in so many states in America you've got these things and it's and it's completely legal you know in places like Spain I think you're allowed to grow you're allowed to grow for your personal use I know that much you know so it's just you know a lot of these things is just crazy Kate Winslet has given £17,000 to a woman in Scotland whose daughter suffers from cerebral palsy. So, well done, Kate. Always been always been one of my favourite actresses, Kate. Very, 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 very nice person for doing that. The only gay in the village has come out in Qatar. And I believe, right, you know, you see, this is the thing now, right? Because if the World Cup wasn't going there, then he would never get a chance to come out. Right, because he knows there's a good chance that he would wake up right in a coffin. Well, probably would wake up, <laughs> right? but that's where he would end up, right? Because you know, it, in um, you know, in, in a lot of those places, right? You know, if you turn around and you, if you turn and you're gay, you're, there's a good chance you get thrown off of a building and shit like that. So it's given him enough strength to come out. Right, and you know he had the rainbow flag in Qatar. I was like, "Wow, you is one brave man." Like a, like a cyclist, like a London cyclist, brave people, right? But this is one brave man, brave individual. Do you know what I mean for him to come out? Because you get thrown into prison. You know, even though you know we used to throw people in prison over here. In like, you know, if you go back, if you go back to the sixties. But um, you know, in Qatar, it's not really the type of thing that you can really come out, but. He has. So I say good luck to him. And staying in Qatar. Joe Lyson has said that he will donate £10,000 to charity if David Beckham does not go to Qatar to um, commentate. Because David Beckham, is, David Beckham, you know, he, you know, he's been paid as a, like a ambassador from, for Qatar for, to, you know, to promote, basically to promote the country. It's ten million pounds. Now I know David Beckham's already rich, but it's ten million pounds. And these things can't be highlighted, right? Unless people go there to highlight. You can't just, you know, say from afar, you've got to change what you're doing in Qatar. Especially as the Qataris, yeah, own massive parts of Heathrow, they own um, parts of Barclays. They own so much things in this country, right, that it would be so hypocritical for any fool that's using a lot of products in this country to turn around and say, oh, well, how dare you? How dare you go there and get £10 million? So, he's, so Joe Lyton has said, well, and if, if David Beckham does go, then what he's going to do <coughs> is he's going to shred the money. Gonna put it for a shredder. And so yeah. So in times of austerity, you're gonna take ten thousand pounds and you're gonna shred it to make a point to David Beckham. Now he said that's not I don't think that's the way to make a point. 
Makes me look flipping stupid if you ask me. Matt Hancock says, said he wants forgiveness because he's in Australia. So he wants forgiveness from the people. But what, which forgiveness? I mean, the first thing he should do is asking his wife for, for, for uh, forgiveness. That's the first thing he should be doing. But um, I don't know. If, well, that's if he's, that's if he's still married because obviously he's... He, he might be divorced now, so he might have, his divorce might well it must have gone through. I suppose it must have gone through by now. But I mean that's the person who should be asking for forgiveness, and then obviously he's got to have forgiveness for. Um, I mean, what for the amount of people that died, the amount of people that got sent for, to the care homes, you know, the amount of people that got sent into in from the care homes into hospitals that infected a lot of people, or vice versa, you know, who you know apologised for the PPE contracts. I don't know, you know, what I mean? he, but. but he, Matt Hancock, wants um, forgiveness. I say, good luck with that, Matt. And more than one million pounds has been spent in the House of Commons subsidised bar, bars. More than a million quid. <laughs> I think they've got quite a few bars in there, but but this shit is subsidised. You know, they, you know, these guys are probably getting a pint for, I don't know, but it will probably be in there. I don't know. I haven't looked. I, I should have looked it up, right? But I'm going to speculate, right? I would say it's going to be under two pounds, right, for a pint of lager in there, right? And I, I think probably a shot. I don't know what a, a, a shot now, right? But I'd say a shot would probably be maybe, I don't know, maybe two fifty three pounds in that in in there, and you know obviously you couldn't get that in a you couldn't get that in a I don't know what the what it is in the pub whatever it is in the pub. Right, I reckon it's going to be half in their in their in their subsidised bars, and one million pounds. Now, it's unbelievable, really, isn't it? Just... And Yvette Cooper, she slapped down yeah, a Tory MP the other day, right? Because he was, you know, this this guy was talking about how Jeremy Corbyn would be, was um, to the to the to to the security of the comp of this country, they said Jeremy Corbyn was a problem for the security of this company. And Yvette Cooper, she just slapped him down, right? You know, mentioned when Boris Johnson went over to um, a Russian castle in Italy for a party without his security detail. Now, obviously, that's not really something that he's supposed to do. And then the next time people saw him, he looked very, very, he looked much worse for wear. But the next time he was seen, but it's that um, that Russian guy that he has got into the Lords Lebedev, I think his name is, right? You know, I'm sure there's somewhere along the line, yeah, there's a KGB link with with this guy. I'm sure somewhere along the line there's a KGB link, right? But me, I would have went for, yeah, I would have, I would have smashed him down with that, and I would have just went down what with, 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 well. You know that, like, the Home Secretary has recently been sending documents on an unsecure server, right? So what you should do is, before you speak about about anything, you should know your facts and perhaps keep your mouth closed. But you know, Yvette Cooper really this really this slap really this slap this fool down. It was quite funny actually. And then. And then it seems that um, Jeremy Hunt all weekend has been out in the media explaining how he's going to have to raise taxes. Seriously raise taxes. Um, you know, obviously we're going to go through austerity 2.0 now. But what, what amazes me, right, is the way how these guys... Are speaking like it was somebody completely different that has done this to the country, right? These are the people who have done this this to this country. They have destroyed, you know. These people have destroyed everything in this country, right? down to them, and they're the people who are now poised to attempt to fix all these things. Now, most people in this country yeah, are already yeah, over the limit. They're already over the limit. They can't, you know, they can't squeeze anything else out. And now they're talking about tax hikes and austerity because they're, obviously they've got to cut a lot of services. So it's just amazing that I don't even know, you know, I, well, I do know how this country's got itself into this problem. It's because you people are a bunch of stupid racists. That's why you've got into this problem. But 
I don't know how you've got into this problem to make it this bad. That's, that is really amazing to make it this bad. And then the same people have still got another two years. Right? And you know, they're going to whack us up with us some austerity now. And then in two years time, right, they're going to say, oh, the, the good times are back now. Because that's what's going to happen. In two years time, right, they're going to, you know, all the good times will be back. Well, as much good times as a country can have when it has um, set, you know, it set itself on a, on, on a road to austerity. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how much, um, <laughs> no clue at all. Dominic Raab has been accused of bullying staff members, right? You know, because obviously whatever ministry he was working in at the time, but that's what he's been accused of. But you know, when, you, when you've got people, yeah, who are born to rule, and that's what you've got to understand about all of these people, they are all born to rule. It's when it comes down, especially when it comes down to the Tories, they're born to rule. And then when you vote for them to rule over you, why wouldn't you expect them to treat you like shit? A lot of these, you know, you got, if you went back further in the day, you'd find that a lot of like, MPs would probably be beaten up, literally physically beaten up their, their workers, literally. So, you know, it doesn't surprise me that Dominic Raab is treating people is treating people this badly. Unite Union or the Unite the Unite Baron sorry, the Barons sorry. The Union Barons of Unite. I knew I was gonna mess that up, right? I don't know how they get away with this all the time. Oh the Union Baron Well, no, the Union leaders are not barons because they can't call a strike. The union leaders can't call a strike without having a vote. And you know, how much other people that, that they need to vote, vote. And if they say, if they say, well, we're voting for strike, how the fuck does that make you a baron? But these people, they're sort of, they're, oh, the union barons. Because it plays out well, it plays out well. You know, in one breath, they're talking about, oh, you know, we're standing up, we're standing up for hard working people. That's what the Tories will tell you in one breath. We're standing up here, right? We are in politics for hard working people. And, they say, and then, fuck those union barons. Look at them. Union barons. Barons, barons, barons. Really. <laughs> Seriously. And it's amazing how the people in this country fall for every single time. And mortgage holders, we've got over three quarters of mortgage holders are worried, they're concerned about what their future. 73% of people who have got mortgages, uh, who have got mortgages have said they are very, very worried about what is going to happen. And they say, well, you know something, I think that you people have been voting against your own interests for far too long. There are cases of diphtheria in one of the migrant processing centres. Obviously, that's you know this is this is what happens when you when, you know when you don't process people properly in the, you know in the right way because you know when you process people in the right way then they have health checks and these type of things. So now what they've got to do is they've got to immunise like you know thousands of these migrants even if even the ones that have left the centre because obviously that's something that, you know once they've left the centres that's something they can come and pass on to the rest of us. You know. Fashion re fashion retailer Jewel has um has gone into administration or they're calling the administrators and obviously this is Brexit Brexit related because their bills would have gone up. Right, you know, every any anything they import from especially you know, especially from the EU, anything they import in, right, would have gone up significantly, right? And take a lot longer to get to you it's not like you know it's not like before how you could you know you get something you know you post something to, to us in from germany and you know in a couple of days it's, it's with you you know you could even probably get a next day service if you use one of them if you use the right courier but now yeah everything's held up because you know all these things have to go through paperwork so it's not like you can get these anything fast tracks you know none of that none of that none of that type of thing works anymore whereas we just had an easy free running system before not anymore and so many people 
are saying that they have not got the Brexit that they voted for. You know, from Nigel Farage, you know, Lord Wilson, and then you got, you know, you got people like um, Tim Martin. Uh, all these people complaining they haven't got the Brexit what they voted for. And I tell you this, right, the, in the, the first thing they should know, right, is that the Brexit you voted for is this one what we've got. I think that people like Nigel Farage, though, wanted an even harder Brexit. That's what I think. Michael Saunders, a, a former Bank of England policymaker, has said the reason why we're going to be facing austerity again now is down to Brexit. But, I mean, we, all, we, we knew this was going to happen because, you know, this was something that was being predicted. I wonder how come, like, he says it, but right, he gets in the bloody newspapers. Right, I've been saying this shit for over six years. Not on, you know, not on YouTube or anything, but I've been saying this shit for over six years. I, you know, most of the time I was just howling to the moon. You know, I could have, you know, I could have went down Speaker's Corner and said it all down there. <laughs> But I don't know. The last time someone from Speaker's Corner, right? Um, I don't know. The last time from speak someone from Speaker's Corner made it into the House of Parliament. Has there been? Has that, has that ever happened? Is, is Speaker's Corner still there? It's got to be. Very famous. You know, my, I'm, I can remember my dad taking me there when I was really, really young. My dad, my dad took me there to you know, the speaker's corner. And all I remember was just a lot of people just shouting. <laughs> it's just like really, re, you know, really crazy. You know what I mean, even when you think about it, it's a really crazy concept. Just going there to speaker's corner just to shout. <laughs> you know I mean? But most, most of the time, anyway, most people could just do it on the high street nowadays, anyway. Brits are being deported from EU countries because they're putting in their paperwork late. So you get a lot of British people being deported. And uh, this, there was a, um, I see a man from um, you get being deported from Belgium, I think, Denmark, from Denmark. A British man was being deported from because he had because he put his paperwork in late. I remember before, yeah, he didn't even need no paperwork. He didn't no paperwork, right? I think all you had to do was just go and get a um a, a, a national insurance number. And you, you know, obviously, with your British passport, they're just like, yeah, 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 there you go. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But now, obviously, you know, you've got to fill out a lot of pe different paperwork. And the government has cancelled its new Brexit trade yacht. I wonder if it's because Brexit is going so badly or because we're a bunch of broke ass motherfuckers over here. Anyway, look, guys. I'm 12 minutes over again. I'm sure I've done that. I'm sure I've done that in my last video. I went 12 minutes over as well. But it is Monday. So, you know, there's been a lot of news over the weekend. So you have to um, let me off because of that. <laughs> anyway, guys, look, I'm going to bow out of here. This, my friends, is by any means necessary. I'm the MC John Ribs. It was really nice to speak to you guys. Comments below. <laughs>